in this ancient city once ruled by sultans and emperors. The real king is the humble alley cat. An army of furry-tailed street cats are fed, sheltered and cooed at by an adoring public in Turkey's historic commercial capital, Istanbul. Yeah, you're such a pretty girl. This British expat even started an advocacy group for her cats in her neighbourhood, Jihangir. Before I started looking after them, there was, you know, kittens after kittens after kittens. And now, all right, there are kittens, but they'll all be spayed and neutered. For the last 30 or 40 years, Jihangir is known for cats. There's a story saying that the first apartments were built and the sewage systems were also built, of course. And then mice problems started to appear around and then people started to keep cats. And from that day and so on, we have cats all around and they're in our lives and they shape our lives. For example, my husband drives a scooter every day to work. But once there was a cat sleeping and he couldn't move it, you know, he just walked. <laughs> Across the Golden Horn, the city's famous mosque, Aya Sophia, has its very own celebrity cat named Glee, who sometimes upstages the architecture. This centuries-long feline fetish is adapting to the digital age. The cats of Istanbul are no longer just popular in real life, they're now big online. Social media sites offering daily pics of Istanbul's cutest street cats boast thousands of followers. There's even a feature film in the works. In many countries, stray cats are seen as pests, but that sentiment is not generally shared here in Turkey. Turks in general like like really care about pets. I think it's like kind of a kind of a Turkish thing to do. It's possible that their status can be traced to a special place that cats have in Islam. They were once the only animal allowed into Prophet Muhammad's prayer room. For the Wall Street Journal, this is Joe Parkinson in Katmad, Istanbul.